Basically, I would like to ask you, you were previously the convener for a support group on Hong Kong's long-term decarbonization plan. Uh, you have since resigned. Can you tell us a little bit about why? Uh, let me explain why. The support group was set up to uh, enable the Sustainable Development Council to reach out to the public to, to understand what their intentions are, what their views are on long-term decarbonization for the sake of uh, avoiding climate disaster in Hong Kong and in the world. Um, the Sustainable Development Council was supposed to submit its report in mid-2019, which is already one and a half years ago. So we are obviously behind schedule. Mm -hmm. My group was responsible for really conducting the public engagement. And we should submit our report a couple of a months, a couple of months before mid 2019. Unfortunately, uh, the secretariat, that means the administration, for some inexplicable reasons, have been postponing the dates. And uh, it has been a long delay. I have tried very hard to push for an explanation of wh why. And uh, of course, I really want them to give me a timeline of the expected progress. But unfortunately, in spite of my repeated request, the Secretariat has not been able to give me any timeline and have not been able to give me any reasonable explanation of the delays. Um, and uh, even after the public engagement was finished, the group was not even, given the number of questionnaires mm -hmm. they received. So there was an information embargo, mm -hmm. uh, which is totally unreasonable. So uh, I, I saw a resistance to supply information to the subgroup, a resistance to the subgroup uh, contributing to the deliberation mm -hmm. that would have produced a, a properly deliberated uh, report. So I was not satisfied with the delay. I was not satisfied with the deliberate effort to avoid myself and the mm -hmm. group members to contribute properly to the process of formulating uh, uh, proposals to uh, uh, enable long-term decarbonization. So I resigned. Right. And so now mainland China has announced that it will be mm -hmm. carbon neutral by 2060. Can Hong Kong catch up? I'm sure Hong Kong can. Um, Hong Kong is different from China in the sense that we are a tightly knitted city and uh, we have no industry, uh, and which is actually a great advantage. Mm -hmm. Most of the energy used in Hong Kong is the electricity generated by fossil fuel. So, so long as we could convert to renewable energy uh, for electricity generation, we will have achieved 60 to 70 percent of the uh, decarbonization. So mm -hmm. that's one. And then secondly, transportation is responsible for uh, about 20 percent of the carbon emission. If we electrify the cars, the boats, mm -hmm. uh, and then we and then we apply renewable energy to electricity generation, we will have solved the problem too. So uh, what kind of um, barriers do you see? Is it political will? Well, uh, in terms of technology, there is no problem. Uh, there is no technological problem. Uh, the technology is here. All that we need to do is upscaling the, 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 the magnitude mm -hmm. of, uh, say, uh, renewable energy uh, generation of electricity and the use of what we call green hydrogen, which is also generated by renewable energy. Mm -hmm. um, so. The solution, the technical solutions are already here, almost. All that we need is the government committing itself to taking up the responsibility of uh, avoiding, preventing climate change and committing itself to a long-term decarbonization strategy. What we need is will, and with will, we have a way. Right, and thank you very much, Mr. Lam, for being yeah. in the studio with us today. Uh, my pleasure.